You guys hear that? Do you hear the cars? We are fishing the Bahia Honda Railway Bridge. This bridge closer to us is the new one. That one over there is the old bridge. What's up guys, my name is Emily. My name's Amanda. Welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twin. Today, we are going to fish a historic landmark, the Bahia Honda Bridge. We thought that it would be nice for you guys to watch us fish a bridge because when the weather is rough and it's too rough to go offshore, where do you fish? What do you do? You can fish a bridge. We're gonna show you all the tips and the tricks and what you can catch at a bridge. Not just any bridge, right here, this is actually US one, but the bridge way back there, it used to be a railroad and it's no longer in service anymore, but now it's a historical landmark, holds tons of fish. It's a great place to come and fish. Right when we got here, the tide is actually switching. So if you look, the boat's kind of on an angle. You guys see that we're not completely straight set up yet. However, the boat will eventually be probably about this way. We are switching from an incoming tide to an outgoing tide. Now, when it comes to tides, the better tide in general for fishing bridges, here at least, is the outgoing tide. However, don't let that stop you from going on an incoming tide. The important part, the really important part to remember is that you are on the up current side. So guys, the current is going this way. Oh, wow, that's a big truck going by. The current is going this way. And when we start fishing, our baits are gonna be going into the bridge between the pilings. That's the important part. What you don't want is you don't wanna be anchored on the other side, your bait's going away from the bridge. You want everything to go into the bridge and really, as long as you're set up like that, whether it's outgoing or outgoing or an incoming tide, you'll be okay as long as the baits and your chum are going into the bridge. I've already got our chum bag out. So we've got some bay grass in here today. You guys can see all that. But we got the chum going and it's gonna be going towards the pilings. I'm gonna show you the rigs, everything we do to fish the bridge. It's a great way to just get some action in with your family, or maybe you're not familiar with fishing down on the Keys, but you guys rented a boat. It's a really easy thing to do. Come fish a bridge, fish a piling, and get some action for you and your family. We're gonna be using a couple of different rigs while we're fishing the bridge. I'll show you, I got one rigged up ready to go. This is our bottom rig, here it is. I have a D-bone ballyhoo, ballyhoo, took the bone out, and put a I believe this is a 6 circle hook through the top of the head. Toss down the water. We have about maybe six to seven feet of 30 pound leader. I'm actually using mono, not fluoro. And at the end of the leader, we have a swivel, a bead, and a sinker. The reason why we have the bead is because this sinker has huge holes. You can buy sinkers with smaller holes, but that's today. Then we have about a 30 pound wind on, mono wind on, all the way to the reel, which has 30 pound braid. This is a 7,500 pen slammer. You can use any fishing reel for this between 50, 4,500, all the way up to probably 7,500 would be good. I'm. This is gonna be my bottom bait, my kind of bigger fish bait that I'm hoping to get. So I'm gonna send them down to the bottom, try and cast it out a little bit if I can, out to the piling. It's on the bottom. Perfect. Now, leave this in the rod holder. I have the drag pretty light, so if a fish gets it, it can run with it and gives me time to run over here and grab it. The second type of rig we're gonna have is just a flat line. Come look in the chub slick. Chub slick. Come look at it, guys. Chub slick. <laughs> okay, look at all these fish, guys. These are what we call Bermuda chubs. Not good to eat. Hard to hook, actually. They have very tiny mouths, but they can give for a fun fishing trip, a fun fishing day if you have kids. We have a bunch of chubs hanging out in our chum slick, which is now making it a chub slick. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm taking a shrimp and I broke the head off. I am going to pinch the tail and break the tail off as well. And I have a little jig here. It doesn't have to be a fancy jig like this. It could be any other snapper jig, but you can get it pretty much any local tackle store down here. We're gonna put the shrimp on like it's a worm. 
Perfect. Just like that. Look good to you, Amanda. This is 15 pound liter. So this is gonna be targeting fish that are in the chum slick. So in this case, we have chubs. We will see if these chubs are interested. Might catch a yellow tail. I did see some yellow tails in the slick. And I'm just gonna let it out. I believe I have a fish. I taken. believe you have a, a you have a chub. You ready? Yeah, let's catch a let's chub. Let's see. Here we go. Let's catch a chub. They're hard to hook. Tiny mouths. I, I got, got a fish, fish on. on. You can look, probably tighten your jack. Oh, it looks like a yellow tail. I got a yellow tail. Check that out, you guys. Guys, we caught a yellow tail in our chub slick. In our chub slick. In our chub slick, just like that. Definitely not a keeper. He actually is not that. But small, he is though. not that small. Let's de -hook look at that. Let's de-hook him. There's the bridge. What I love about bridge fishing, guys, is it's just a fun way to get some action. What I love about bridge fishing, guys, is it's a great way to just get action, take your family out, have some fun. You may catch small snappers. Oh, we got something on. I'm just taking this drag. Please don't oh boy, go. Boy, you're going through the bridge. Do you, do you want me to, um... Yeah, turn the motor's on. Broke me off, you guys. Let's see well, that. Well, that is why we put a bottom bait down. Look at this. What is it? Is it, it got me in the bridge? Oh yeah. You can feel it's super chafed. That was either a really big snapper. It could have been a shark, but honestly, it didn't run like a shark at all. Something like tarpon would eat something like that, but it definitely wasn't a tarpon because we would have seen the tarpon. Could have been a grouper. I'm thinking it was something along the lines of a grouper, a big snapper, something, something like that. Wow. Okay, so what you guys didn't see because we didn't get the chance to explain to you is I had an anchor ball set up. As you can see, I quickly threw the anchor overboard and abandoned my anchor. Over there is my anchor ball underneath the bridge and my anchor is hanging on over there. So the next thing I'm going to show you is the anchor ball. Now the anchor ball is not something you have to do at the bridge, but it is good. If you have a big fish come on, you can abandon your anchor and you can follow your fish with the boat. Right. If we didn't have the anchor ball, we would have lost that fish way quicker. Granted, it's still you against the fish against the bridge. And that fish does have the advantage in this setting because look at all that structure he has. He can go wherever he wants, guys, and you're sitting here trying to be fast. You gotta be fast. Wow, good job, though. I think we did pretty good. I think we did really good. We did a good, had a good fair fight. Fair fight. Okay, I'm gonna go anchor back up and I'm gonna show you our anchor ball rig. Let's check out my anchor ball setup, you guys. I will be honest with you, this is not our typical anchor ball setup. This is kind of like a, did what I could to rig it. I usually have a much better system for this, but we weren't really entirely prepared. But I'll show you, it's the same concept regardless. We have, we are anchored, and we have our anchor tied off here. And I have a whole bunch of extra rope that I have as organized as possible. If you look, it's tied up. And I have the anchor ball here. The anchor ball is here attached to this rope. So basically what happened was when we hooked up, Amanda came over here, she untied us, she threw the whole ball over, and we started drifting back towards the bridge. Because this anchor ball is tied to the rope, it started floating on the surface for us. So we drove back up, I grabbed the gaff, got us back hooked up nicely. Now, if you wanna do this properly, the proper way would be to get a short amount of line, maybe 75 feet of rope, and you will tie your anchor ball or your poly ball, whatever you want to call it, to the very, very end of your line, as opposed to having all this extra rope here. This is the same anchor that we use when we fish the reef and the wrecks offshore. 
So in this situation, that's why we have all the extra line. But if you use a shorter line, you could just put your anchor ball on the end, tie it off, throw the whole thing over. Same exact concept, guys. And then your anchor's floating out there for you. And you go back up, you grab it, you retie off. Just like that. I think we need to put another bottom bait out, get another chance at whatever that fish was that stole, that got away from us, stole our bait, my hook, broke me off. My theory, I actually personally believe, personally believe it could have been a tarpon. You think so? I really, really it's think so. It's very possible. But you never know. We will never know. The one that got away. The one that got away. Whew. I feel like I can relax now, don't you? I know. We threw another D-Bone yeah. Ballyhoo out. So here is our bottom bait out there. We casted it out, waiting for another bite. Hopefully, whatever took our bait the first time comes back for a second time. And Amanda is rigging yet another option. I am going to be a fishing a knocker rig. Let's see this. Thing. And the knocker rig is all it is. It is a sinker and a hook. You can put a bead between the two, but the sinker has very, very tiny holes, so I'm not too worried about getting caught up in the hook. I'm gonna just fish a shrimp on the bottom and see what's down there. This this will be our action rod, along with what Emily did earlier with the flat line. Those can be our action rods. Then we got a big fish rod hanging out, waiting for the bite. We're on. Bottom rig. Bottom rig went out, guys. The big fish rig. Did not get a big fish, but it did get a fish. Let's see what it is. Oh, oh it's a oh, grouper. We got a black grouper, check it out. Look yeah. at that. Black grouper. Big fish rod caught us a black grouper. Keep reeling, Emily. Look at this, Look you at guys. That. That's a nice size grouper. Fishing the bridge, catching black groupers. This guy in a whole deboned valley who. Look at how colorful he is. Look at how lit up he is. This black grouper is definitely going to be too small to keep. However, I will explain to you why they're called black groupers. We've got this black tint on all the fins, hence why they're called black groupers. The other thing about a black grouper is they kind of have these like, I like to look at them as squares, like boxy pattern on them. This guy is definitely much too small to keep, but beautiful fish, delicious eating for when he does grow big. Now that we have this black grouper in the boat though, I'm thinking that that other fish might have been a bigger older, maybe grandpa black grouper. Could have been a grandpa grouper. A little fun fact about groupers too, guys, is this meat right here is the cheek. The grouper cheek has meat in it. You can feel it. You can tell that there's yeah, meat in there. Right there. We actually have a really cool video of catch, clean, cook grouper cheeks, you guys. But he's too small, so let's let him go. Let him swim to see another day. Black grouper released. The current has started to get stronger since we've been here because we went from an incoming tide to a slack tide to an outgoing tide. But now that we're on a complete outgoing tide, the current is pretty strong and drifting flat lines back like I did earlier where I caught the yellowtail might not be ideal. So that's when you're gonna really wanna fish the bottom and focus on the bottom with these rigs that we've been doing with the grouper and whatever other species it is that we lost. So we'll put some more bottom rigs out and focus on that. The next rig we're gonna put out is actually the exact same that we just caught that mysterious fish on, but we have wire set up. So there's wire attached to our hook and what we're going to do, so this morning we were at the reef. Take a look at what we caught at the reef. Yellowtail snapper. And just to clarify, this is a 12 inch yellowtail snapper that we kept. We're gonna use this yellowtail snapper for bait. You can do that, but it counts against your aggregate. So our aggregate snapper aggregate is 10 per person. So if I use this one for bait, I get to only keep nine. It doesn't mean that I get to use it for bait and still catch 10. So I am sacrificing one of my aggregate snappers for a bait. And the idea for this one is maybe to catch a shark or something that would be a yellowtail snapper. I'm thinking this is a shark bait though. I'm gonna start with butterflying my yellowtail snapper. Sorry, it's hard to see you guys. I gotta put my hand on it. Pull right through, right here. Get all the way through. See that? Perfect. Butterfly yellowtail snapper is gonna make the perfect shark bait. Hopefully, we can catch the shark, but. You guys can also do this with a bonita, anything. A ballyhoo. You can use a ballyhoo, but we're gonna change it up and use a little bit of a bigger bait. Maybe we'll catch something too. We have wire, we got wire, and then we have our leader. I'm just gonna hook this guy right through the head, right up there. Perfect. We're gonna send him out. Send 
time out. Catch something big. Throw it. Oh, lost it. Lost it. Well, the ring worked. That was sad. Within minutes. Within minutes. Oh my goodness. Now that one I can guarantee you was a shark. It went straight out. Let's see where we lost it. Ooh, it broke the wire. Crazy. That's so Guys, sad. that's really sad. We could have had our shark. We definitely did not get him. But clearly, that bait works. That was a deboned yellowtail snapper. We caught fish on. Oh, deboned butterfly. Sorry, a butterfly yellowtail snapper. I don't know many more snappers in the box to use, which is unfortunate. But we've also got our deboned valley hoo. <gasps> Guys, I got a monster. I got a giant, ginormous salad. We caught. Check out the salad. salad. What? It's crazy. Look at that fast. salad. Okay. Guys, look at that salad. Look at how much current is running through here. It's running through it's here ripping so today. fast. In conditions like this, when the current's absolutely ripping and the weeds are everywhere, I would switch from going action fishing, snapper fishing, to strictly shark fishing. I would be putting big baits down with big leads and focusing on the bottom because it's going to be really hard for a tiny fish to eat your bait. It's moving so fast. This is a difficult. Really the other thing you can do though is try a different bridge. The current rips through here. So there's another bridge that's around the corner, around that way, and it's a lot smaller, and the current usually doesn't rip as strong. So when you have ripping current, this is Bahi Hana Bridge. It's famous for its current, it's famous for its current, it's famous for a million reasons, but the current absolutely rips through here. I would go and try to find a smaller bridge that probably doesn't have. Try no current. name bridge, maybe. No name bridge if you're in Big Pine. That would be a great second place to go when you have current like this. So don't forget guys, when you're bridge fishing, make sure you bring some shark rigs for the bottom, yes. tarpon rig, D-bone valley who, squid, jigs, shrimp, shrimp, everything guys. Everything, bridge fishing is action based. I really wish we could have landed one of those sharks for you, but to be completely frank, we ran out of D-bone valley who <laughs> and we ran out, but we only had one yellow tail with us. So next time I come to the bridge, I'm gonna bring way, way more, more bait than I anticipated. Valley. Definitely. Significantly more. So guys, always bring enough bait. Take this lesson from us. You can never have too much bait because you can go home and throw it back in the freezer. If you have a freezer for that, of course. We hope you enjoyed this video, guys. We hope you learned a lot. We showed you several different bridge fishing techniques, the bottom fishing, the drifting the bait back. The anchor ball. The anchor ball. The anchor ball is a really good one, guys. We hope this was helpful. We definitely plan on coming back to the bridge. And honestly, I want to come back and I want to fish for sharks. Yeah, we're going to redeem ourselves. We're going to redeem ourselves at this bridge very soon. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and follow Gale Force Twins on Facebook, Facebook Instagram, YouTube. YouTube. Like and subscribe for more.